So when I first filmed my bookshelf tour, I was not expecting to split it up into two videos. So I never did an intro for a second half of the bookshelf tour, so hence this video right now. <laughs> That's right, I've already posted the first half of my bookshelf tour, and now you guys are gonna watch the final half. So enjoy seeing all of the books on my bookshelves. Okay, so this is the little bookcase I have at the end of my bed. I basically use this little guy as a footboard for my bed. It looks like that up top. So I do have some books up top that we get a look at. And then all of this good stuff. So let's get cracking. So a couple of things to note. I currently have my fall decor out, which is why you might see some fall stuff. And second, if you guys have made it to this video and aren't bored yet, God bless you. I feel like this is going to be the most boring video you've ever watched, but uh, we're just gonna roll with it. Okay, so. <clears throat> up here we have some of my favorite classic editions these as you guys can tell are Jane Austen books that was again sent to me by the lovely Dustin he works at a bookstore and sees the coolest books in the world and sometimes he sends them to me because he's a fantastic friend so let's look at the books themselves book one is persuasion in this very cool blue purple cover we then have Emma which is one of my favorite Jane Austen books right here which is a teacup and it looks like this Northanger Abbey is the next one in this set right here it looks very spooky which fits the spooky vibe of the book next is Pride and Prejudice and that means finally the one that we have here is Sense and Sensibility very cool editions and very unique next up here is the hardcover Barnes & Noble Classic Edition of The Secret Garden. I fell in love with this edition as soon as I saw it and I knew I had to have it. I love this book as a child and this, this cover is just so cool. It's kind of shimmery, has gilded pages and a built-in bookmark. So I always display this one because I just find it to be really, really, really pretty. And now finally, we are at the last set of classics on top of this bookcase. These are the Puffin and Bloom editions. These were all about young woman coming of age stories. First up, we have Anna Green Gables by Ellen Montgomery. As I said, I collect Anna Green Gables editions. This one was no exception. Next, we have Heidi by Johanna Spirey. The Little Princess by Frances Hodgson Burnett. And finally, Little Woman by Louise May Alcott. This one is actually my favorite, with Anna Green Gables coming in second in terms of the cover design. So we're now at the first shelf of this bookcase. These are all pretty much adult fantasy books for the most part. Uh, just kind of threw them on here just because I thought they'd look good. So let's get started. The first series we have right here is the Inda series by Sherwood Smith, which consists of Inda, The Fox, King's Shield, Trees and Shore, and Banner of the Damned. The pictures and the covers are actually on the spines, which I thought was pretty cool. I uh, need to reread the Inda series because the final book set in this world is gonna be coming out this year. Not, I don't necessarily know if it's a final book, but it's definitely set in this world. Also still need to read Banner of the Damned, but it takes place after the events of the Inda series, and I need to read it. I then have Republic of Thieves by Scott Lynch. I do actually have uh, Lies of Lamora and Red Seas and a Red Skies, but they're mass market paperback form, so they're not on the shelf. I then have The Popular by R.F. Kuang. The Library at Mount Char by Scott Hawkins, which I heard is pretty hauntingly fantastic. Next up on this stack right here, I have Seafire by Natalie C. Parker. Onyx and Ivory by Mindy Arnett. And then I have the Aragon series by Christopher Paolini, which consists of Aragon, Eldest, Brisinger, and Inheritance. Despite the fact that these, these books get a lot of shade, I actually do really like them. Next up on my stack of books here, I have In the Eye of Heaven by David Keck. That seems like a fantasy series right up my alley. As you can see, Patrick Rothfuss enjoyed it, so I need to get to it at one point. But this is book one in the Tales of Durand. Next up, I have the Jacoby series by Mr. William Ritter, book one being Jacoby. Book two is Beastly Echoes. And then I have book three here, which is Beastly Bones. I feel like I may, I feel like I might actually have these in the wrong order. If that is the case, please forgive me and do not throw me shade in the comments, or you can anyway, and I'll just ignore it, I guess. Next, I have Mystic by Jason Denzel. This is the founder of Dragon Mount series. I haven't heard anybody talk about this one. I happened to see it at Powell's and it caught my eye and I had a credit, so I picked it up. And the final section here is a little bit of odds and ends, except for this one series. This right here is Crown Duel by Sherwood Smith, which is, of course, the author of the ended books over here. This takes place in the same world, but years and years and years and years later. Because one of the books they mention Inda, 
as if he was a legend. It may or may not have been real. And I'm like, oh, but he was. Anyway, moving on. Next, we have The Traitor God by Cameron Johnston. One of my booktube buddies actually showed this to me on Twitter and I'm like, um, yeah, this looks really good. And then I happened to see it at Pals the next week. So I figured it was meant to be and picked it up. Next up right here is The Traitor Son Cycle by Miles Cameron. Finished the series this year and absolutely loved it. I am actually gonna show you these covers because I enjoy them very much. These are the UK covers and I think they're gorgeous. Book one is The Red Knight by Miles Cameron. Book two is The Fell Sword. Book three is The Dread Worm. And book four is Plague of Swords, which is actually my favorite cover. And then I do actually have book five, which is The Fall of Dragons. However, I accidentally ordered the wrong size and it's about the size of a hardback and doesn't, doesn't fit. So um yeah, once the regular sized book comes out, I'm going to rebuy it because I need things to match because I am that person. So yes, moving on. The final book kind of fitting in the dragon theme here is Dragon's Blade Veiled Intentions by Michael Miller. This is part of the Dragon's Blade series. I enjoy book one well enough. I still need to read book two. I also think I need to reread book one because it's been like two and a half years. All right, and that is it for this shelf up here. Now we gotta go one shelf down. This shelf is really, really low, so this angle is going to be absolutely terrible for this shelf. Um, so please, please bear with me and forgive me for this horrible angle. My tripod only goes so low. Okay, so the first thing we have here is the Kevin Heron series, which is based on Fae and like Irish Celtic mythology. Um, we have book one, which is Hounded by Kevin Heron. The thing I like about the series is that it reminds me of Percy Jackson for adults. So the humor is there and the mythology is there, but it's very much an adult series. I read Hounded. I really, really need to continue on with Iron Druid series. And I can't because I had a coworker at my last job who bought them all for his Kindle, and then gifted me with the entire set, which was very nice of him. Next up is Hexed, and I feel like I might not have these in the right order either, so again, if I have them in the wrong order, please don't yell at me, I'm just lazy. Next up is Hammered, Tricked, Trapped, and yes, I'm aware of these terrible, horrendous covers. I did not design them, however, so it's not my fault. Next is Hunted. I also like to point out that that's not how I imagine him. Like, he's supposed to be 2,000 years old, and that's really not how I pictured him in my head. He also looks like Tyler from Big Brother. Wow, look at that. Tyler, I found your twin. Next is Shattered. Also really love the soul patch thing he has going on there. And then the final one is Staked. Very exciting stuff. Okay, next up we're moving into some more fun fantasy type books. This book is from the Unraveled Kingdom series by Rowena Miller, which is called Torn. Uh, she basically possesses thread magic. I really, really need to read this series because it sounds like it'll be up my alley. And then this series right here by Melissa Caruso is another one I haven't read. It's from the Swords and Fire series. Book one being The Tethered Mage, and then book two being The Defiant Heir. That was sent these by Orbit. Um, just, you know, again, another case of so much to read in so little time. <laughs> and now we move into my Tamara Pierce collection. In case you guys didn't know, I'm a big fan of Tamara Pierce. Okay, so I'm not taking these out of their boxes because they are just, it's just, I'm sorry guys, I'm lazy and it's a pain to get them in and out, so bear with me. But this is the Song of the Lioness Quartet, which consists of Alana, the first adventure. Book two is in the hands of the goddess. Book three is the woman who rides like a man. And then the final book is Lioness Rampage. We then have the Wild Magic Quartet, which is actually my favorite quartet by Tamara Pierce consists of wild magic wolf speaker emperor mage and in the realm of the gods they're supposed to be releasing the protector of the small quartet in these new editions i'm still waiting because i want that box set we then have right here tortal a spy's guide which is a very cool little hardcover it's a companion novel to the tortal books which consists of alana of course i believe this is actually supposed to be written by alana's husband next is a new book by tamara pierce this year actually it is temptus and slaughter which follows the new mirror character which you will be familiar with if you have read the wild magic series we are into the tricksters duology which is which is one of my favorites, follows Alana's daughter, and it consists of Trickster's Choice and Trickster's Queen. Next up, I have the first book in the Becca Cooper series, which is book one, Terrier, which follows George Cooper's great, 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 what have you, grandmother. I need to get books two and three. I was a little annoyed because they didn't make the rest of the editions in this type of cover, um, which really bugs me. <laughs> Okay, so next up I have this old edition of Wild Magic that my sister and her boyfriend had got me a few years ago. I then have the Circle of Magic Quartet right here, which consists of Sandry's book, Triss's book, Daja's book, 
Briar's book. We then go into the Circle Opens Quartet, which it follows the same characters when they're older and consists of magic steps, street magic. And then at this point, I had caught up with the series and only the hardcovers are being released. So then we have book three in the Circle Opens, which is Cold Fire, and book four, which is Shatter Glass. And then this series right here was like a companion novel to those books and follows those characters and they're a lot older and it is The Will of the Empress. All right, well that sums it up for this lovely shelf right here. And now we get to move on to the final bookcase. Okay, now we move on to my final bookcase, which is right here. It is right next to my bed. It's my newest bookcase and houses some of my favorite books. So let's get cracking. So as I mentioned earlier, the shelf over there in my other bookcase was my first classics bookshelf. This is my second one. It actually houses some of my favorite classic editions of all time, which consists of the World Cloud Classics and the Penguin English Library. So let's see what I have. So the World Cloud Classic editions are done by Canterbury. They're my favorite editions. You can find them on Amazon. The ones that I have so far are Our Little Woman by Louisa May Alcott, The Brothers Grimm, 101 Fairy Tales, Madame Bovary by Gustave Flaubert, 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 probably saying that wrong, forgive me. I then have Pride and Prejudice by Jane Austen. Northanger Abbey by Jane Austen. I also have Emma by Jane Austen in this edition. I'm just currently reading it, which is why it's not necessarily in this shelf at the moment. I then have Persuasion by Jane Austen. I then have 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea by Jules Verne. The Odyssey by Homer. Sense and Sensibility by Jane Austen. And in case you're wondering why I don't have them together, it's because I was trying to do them like in a rainbow. So that's why not all the Austen books are next to each other. A Christmas Carol and Other Holiday Treasures by Charles Dickens. Mansfield Park by Jane Austen. Another edition of Anna Green Gables by Lucy Maud Montgomery. The Age of Innocence by Edith Wharton. The Three Musketeers by Alexandra Dumas. And The Count of Monte Cristo by Alexandra Dumas. And then finally, Frankenstein by Mary Shelley. All right, I'm gonna try and go with this angle. We're a little bit cramped since we're next to my bed, but the rest of these editions are all penguin for the most part, except for this guy right here, which is from Barnes and Noble, and it's a Irish fairy in folk tales in this cute little gilded edition. Then in the penguin English library editions, we have Little Dort by Charles Dickens. Wuthering Heights by Emily Bronte. I actually hated this book, and the only reason I keep it is because it's a cover. <laughs> Wow, it seems so shallow. <laughs> Tenant of Wildfell Hall by Anne Bronte. I loved this book. North and South by Elizabeth Gaskell. Lady Audley Secret by Mary Elizabeth Braddon. I love this cover. The Mystery of Edwin Drood by Charles Dickens. And then finally, in these editions, The Moonstone by Wilkie Collins. These next editions are the Penguin Clothbound Classics. We have The Woman in White by Wilkie Collins. Amazing book. Big House by Charles Dickens. Again, this is one of my favorite Dickens books, aside from A Christmas Carol, it was so good. And then we have A Christmas Carol and Other Christmas Writings by Charles Dickens, so, because you can never have too many Christmas books, am I right? Finally, this isn't Penguin, but it is kind of classic-esque, and it's J.R.R. Tolkien's Beowulf, so this was Tolkien's translation and commentary on Beowulf, which I actually love that epic, and I need to read this one because I haven't read Tolkien's take on it. My next shelf down actually doesn't have that many books. It's where I keep my Nintendo Switch and games, as well as my currently reading pile and my lotion and whatnot. That is my currently reading pile, in case you guys wanted to know. Next up, we have the shelf that I love more than any other, and that is my Robin Hobb shelf. All of my Robin Hobb books. I love this shelf. That's why it's next to my bed, so I can gaze at them lovingly while I sleep. Okay, so first off, I have Assassin's Apprentice lent to somebody. Royal Assassin is up there. You just saw it a second ago because I'm currently reading it. So then we have Assassin's Quest, which is, of course, the third book in the Farseer trilogy. Next is the Light Ship Traders trilogy, the first book being Ship of Magic. Book two is The Mad Ship. Book three is Ship of Destiny. Book one being Fool's Errand. Book two, one of my favorite covers, is The Golden Fool. Book three is Fool's Fate. This is actually the book I took to the Robin Hobb signing I went to, which of course she signed, because this is my favorite of all of her books. And in case you guys are wondering, I do have hard covers of the final trilogy. This is for a reason. So when I was hosting the Hob Along Read Along, I had emailed her for a question, and she knew about me and my channel and the work I was doing, so she wanted to send me Fool's Assassin and Fool's Quest. And I was like, that'd be amazing, because who's gonna say no? right? So they came and she very, very kindly had inscribed them to me, which was super exciting. So this was the first one. It says to Samantha, thanks for being a reader, Robin Hobb. 
And then on Fool's Quest, she inscribed to Samantha, thanks for all you do. So, so these are definitely kind of like the crown jewels of my collection. I will forever treasure these books. And then of course I bought Assassin's Fate because that was the newest release last year and I wanted to support her works. Moving on to the Rain Wilds Chronicles, we have Dragon Keeper book one, Dragon Haven, which is book two, City of Dragons, which is book three, and then finally, Blood Dragons, which is book four. Then we move into the final trilogy, Fits in the Fool trilogy, book one being Fool's Assassin. Book two was Fool's Quest. And then book three was Assassin's Fate, which is my other favorite cover. I actually need to repurchase this because I accidentally bought the one that was too small. I then have my Patrick Rothfuss books, book one being The Name of the Wind. This is the first edition. I got it when it came out. Apparently this cover is really rare. Did not know that until a couple years ago, but now, now you guys can see it. Apparently this, this cover was a thing for a while. And then I have book two, which is Wise Man's Fear. And at this point I would usually show you book three, but apparently Patrick Rothfuss wants to take 10 years to write the third book. So, um, yeah, still waiting for that. Next up is a series by one of my other favorite authors, Juliette Marillier. For book one is Shadowfell. Book two is Ravenflight. Book three is The Caller. Really fun fae fantasy story. And then the final books I have on here are two of the books from the Sorcery Ascendant sequence by Mitchell Hogan. Book one is Crucible of Souls, and book two is Blood of Innocence. All right, this next second to last shelf is full of a bunch of adult fantasy and science fiction reads. I'm sure at this point, you guys are getting real tired of my voice, so thanks for sticking with me. The first book I have here is The Stone Skull by Elizabeth Fair. Still haven't read this one, but one day, one day. Next is In the Region of Summer Stars by Stephen Lawhead. This is his new kind of Celtic fae retelling. I'm very excited to get to this. Next I have one of my favorite books from 2018, and that is Girl on the Tower by Catherine Arden. I absolutely adore this cover. Next is Starless by Jacqueline Carey. I then have Red Sister by Mark Lawrence, which is the first book in the Book of the Ancestor series. Then I have book two, Grey Sister, which is another one of my favorite reads from this year. I then have Circe by Madeline Miller. Keep hearing amazing things, hoping to get to it this winter. And another one of my favorite recent reads, Foundry Side by Robert Jackson Bennett. I also have a nice gap here for another book. Haven't gotten that book yet, but there's space, so that's good. All right, next up, I'm gonna try and move a little bit quicker through these books because, you know, I'm sure this video is already gonna be like an hour long. Next up is Flame in the Mist by Renee Addy. Haven't read it yet, hope to soon. Dusk Fall by Christopher Hoosberg is the next one I have to show you guys. I received, I received this as a gift from my friend, still haven't read it. Watchmaker of Filigree Street by Natasha Poli. Again, haven't read this one. Actually, I haven't read any of the ones on the shelf, so this this little section here. So just, just assume I haven't read it. Vicious by V.E. Schwab is next. Valista by Stephen Brust, which I believe is like book 15 or something, but I gather you can kind of read them as standalones. I then have the first two books in the steampunk series by Robin Bennis, book one being By Fire Above, and book two being The Guns Above. All right, and for the last little section here, I have City of Stairs by Robert Jackson Bennett, Adrift by Rob Bofford, Zero Sum Game by S.L. Huang, Lock In by John Scalzi, the sequel Head On by John Scalzi, Space Opera by Catherine Valente, Dance of Cloaks by David Dalgesh, The Faded Sky by Mary Robinson Burnett, Midnight Arcade, which is like a video game, choose your own adventure book. And then I have Soul Regard of Sound Things by Patrick Rothfuss. So that that's that shelf in a nutshell. Which brings us to this final shelf right here, which consists of nonfiction and mass market paperbacks. So let's get cracking. I don't think I'm gonna pull out my nonfiction books, but these are all primarily history related. We have a short history of the Middle Ages right here, which is actually from a medieval studies class I took in college. I then have Dark History, Celts, which is a book all about the Celts. Chivalry in Medieval England. I then have Everyday Life in the Middle Ages and Everyday Life in Ancient Egypt. I've read this one really, really good. Currently going to be starting this one soon. I then have a biography on Louisa May Alcott, Romantic Outlaws, which is all about like the romantic authors like the Brontes and whatnot. I then have this fun book, which I can't wait to read this Christmas. It's Tree of Treasures by Bonnie Mackey. It's all about Christmas ornaments and things, which I think will be pretty fun. I then have How the Irish Saved Civilization. I read this one. It was actually very enlightening and I highly recommend. And then I have a medieval reader, which is full of a bunch of different writings from the Middle Ages. Now moving on to fiction type books, I have Empire of Sand by Tasha Suri. This is a Middle Eastern inspired fantasy, which I have already read. It's coming out in November and we'll have a review up around that time. I then have Emma by Jane Austen in manga form. Very exciting. I didn't even know this was a thing until my birthday. And then I'm probably not gonna bring a pull out these mass market paperbacks, but as you can see, I have quite the collection. I have A Cavern of Black Ice by J.B. Jones, The Bulldog, the Bone Dolls Twin by Lynn Fluiling, Prince of Fools and Mark Lawrence, The Den of Thieves by David Chandler, Lies of Loch Lamora by Scott Lynch, Red Seas Under Red Skies by Scott Lynch, 
Fuzzy Nation by John Scalzi, which is one of my favorite books. I then have Furies of Calderon by Jim Butcher. The books two and three in the Molotson series, so Dead House Gates and Memories of Ice. I then have book two in this Melanie Ron series, which is the Star Scroll. I already read book one, but I kind of sold it back. I then have this anthology of stories, which is called Dreams Underfoot by Charles Dayland. I then have The Edge of the World by Kevin J. Anderson. The first two books in the series by Sarah Beth Durst, The Queen of Blood and The Reluctant Queen. And then finally, I have another Juliette Marillier book, which is Dreamer's Pool. So I have quite the variety of different mass market paperback books. So that's pretty much all of my bookcases in a nutshell. And now I have one more place where I keep some books and it's on my dresser. That's it. And then this tour will be done. All right, so here's my dresser. As you can see, I keep some books up here. Let me move my little fall sign out of the way. So this is where I keep my 20th anniversary editions of Robin Hobbs books. So right here we have Assassin's Apprentice, Royal Assassin, and then we have Assassin's Quest. These are gorgeous editions. I try not to read them because I don't want to ruin them. I've read Assassin's Apprentice a couple of times and the lettering's already kind of rubbing off. So try not to read them and more to admire. Right here is where I keep my Barnes & Noble Classics Leather Bound Editions. They're a little bit difficult to kind of get out and handle because they're very heavy. But I have Fairy Tales from Around the World, Le Morte de Arthur, A Treasury of Irish Fairy and Folk Tales, Doctor Who Short Stories, The Silent Stars Go By, and Touched by an Angel. I then have The Ultimate Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, The Snow Queen and Other Winter Tales, and Great Expectations by Charles Dickens, which is my second favorite Charles Dickens book. Bleak House being number one, this is number two, and then A Christmas Carol is number three. So this sums up my tour of the bookcases in my room. If you guys stuck around to the end of this video, I thank you so much for following me and watching this video all the way to the end as you guys get to see my collection of books and all of their beauty.